so much. But God, how much I like that song. I love it. That was uh, when uh, professional wrestling was actually pretty decent and you could watch it with the kids without being thoroughly embarrassed. So, as always, first and foremost, we're going to give thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for holding the rain off. Thank you for giving us this beautiful day. Thank you for putting us in the greatest nation on earth and giving us this wonderful freedom. God bless uh, the United States of America. And like I said, we give thanks to Jesus Christ as always. Is this too loud? Is this little microphone, is it on? Can you still hear me? No? Oh, it's to record me. Well, hello there. How are you? <laughs> All right. So, what are we what are we here for tonight? We're here tonight to celebrate freedom. We're here to celebrate all the great things that we have in this nation. We are here to say thank you to God for giving us those wonderful those wonderful freedoms. We're here to be happy about all the things that we have. But we are also here for another reason. We are here to tell those folks that would seek to take our freedom and turn this nation into a socialist hell, hell hole. We're here to tell those folks, hell no, you will not. Because some God-fearing, American-loving patriots are going to stop you. You see, here it is. The news media, the kneeling athletes, the the uh, the blue-haired professors down at uh, all the colleges who love to tell me, you know, you're wrong. This really isn't not a Christian nation. And really, actually, Thomas Jefferson was a deist. And, you know, we don't really just have a region of church and state. You know, those are the voices that are loudest. They're the ones we hear about. They're the ones they put on television. They're the ones who won't let it go. You know, Facebook has got this thing out. So please call us. We have uh, someone that can remedy that. Or, you've been exposed to extremism. <laughs> have you been exposed to extremism? Call this number. And, I, you know, I'm looking at this thing and I'm thinking to myself, what is an extremist? By Facebook standards, what an extremist is, an extremist is President Donald Trump who loved this nation, who loved God, who loved what was right. A, a God-fearing Christian patriot is an extremist to Facebook. But here's what's an extremist to me. Somebody that just won't shut up about it. Ever. They won't shut up during the football game. They won't shut up when they're playing in the football game. They won't shut up when they're teaching math or science or reading. They won't shut up about it on television. They won't shut up about it on the commercials. They won't shut up about it when they're in a restaurant, when they're in an airport. They won't shut up about it. Why won't they shut up about it? Because they are determined to force socialism down your collective throats. They are determined to do it. I'm here to tell you this, folks. I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to stand for it anymore. I'm not going to stand for this foolishness that we see going on right now. You know, we love to say, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for them to come out and say, well, Mark Robinson's a homophobe. He doesn't like homosexuals. Do you hear what he said about transgender people? I haven't said anything about transgender people. The only thing I said about transgender people is this. You have the right to be transgender, but you cannot transcend God's creation. And you are not playing on the girls' team if you're a man. When did freedom, when did freedom become insanity? That's my question. When did freedom become insanity? You have the right to express yourself any way you want, but you do not have the right to be insane. And wanting to play on the girls' team as a boy is insane. You cannot do it. You will not do it. If I have anything to do about it in North Carolina, it will not fly. And I'm not shy about saying anything about it. There's not but two genders, two, count them, two. There's two sets of DNA, male and female, that's it. Get mad at me, where's WRAL? Write that down, get the quote. Right. And here's, here's what else I'm not afraid to say. I'm not afraid to say that the United States of America is the greatest nation on earth. 
Like it or not, the United States of America is the greatest nation on earth. And as far as this whole thing we got going on right now with something called critical race theory, you see, critical race theory is a theory. But let me tell you the truth. And I want somebody that believes in critical race theory, I want them to use critical race theory to explain the story of Mark Robinson. Amen. Cause let's count it by the numbers. Mark Robinson was born in the South. Oh Lord, the South. You know where the rebels run around and wave Confederate flags and hate black people. Mark Robinson was born poor. Mark Robinson was born with an alcoholic father and a mother who had already had eight other children, would have one after him, and had a fifth grade education. Mark Robinson, if you have not noticed, is black. Mark Robinson grew up very poor. Looking at the world thinking he was less than what the world is. Now, in that story, somebody told me, said that some leftist guy says, you always say that you grew up yourself feeling less than. How do you think that's possible? That was possible because I was a child and had not, let, had not yet listened to the advice of my mother who told me I could be anything that I wanted to be. Once I listened to that advice... I stopped listening to that devil in my head that was telling me I was less. Nobody ever told me I was less than. I assumed that in my mind and once I threw that baggage off, I saw my life start to rise. And so critical race theory, how do you explain the poor black child, number nine of 10, with an alcoholic father and a mother with a fifth grade education? According to that theory, here's where I should be. Dead, in jail, a drug dealer, an alcoholic, or a wife beater, or all of the above, according to that theory. Nowhere in that theory will they explain to you how in the world I grew up to become a United States soldier, and then a factory worker, and then a factory worker, and a, or then a small business owner, and then a factory worker, and, and, and college student, and now stand as the first black lieutenant governor of North Carolina. I challenge anybody who believes in critical race theory to get in my face and try to convince me that that theory is true. It is not truth. It is a lie based on the. It is a lie based on lies from the pit of the the pit of hell. Is what critical race theory is. It is a way to try to drag this nation once again back over to the far left, the extreme left of socialism, of extremism. For those of you all that don't know, critical race theory comes from something called critical theory. Critical theory comes from something called the. A Frankfurt School. The Frankfurt School is a school that teaches Marxist thought. Critical race theory teaches Marxist thought. It teaches you that you're not responsible for your own actions. Society is. I know that's not true because I've looked at my entire life, my own life. When I made bad decisions, I got bad results. When I made good decisions, I got good results. And I know millions of people out there that did the exact same thing. And so we've got to stand up against critical race theory. You see, they think they got you with this whole critical race theory thing. Because if you don't believe in it, guess what? You're a bigot. You're a bigot and you, you, you can't, you know, you, you just don't say anything else to me because you're a bigot. Now I don't want to hear anything else you've got to say. That's the only reason why you don't like critical race theory. It's because you're a bigot. No. It's not that I'm a bigot, I have a brain. And I can think past the end of my nose. And I know what you're saying is foolishness. And I'm telling each and, one, each and every one of you out there this right now. Do not be afraid to stand up. The time for laying back has long passed, folks. You know, I can't tell you how many times I get messages from Democrats who say things like this. Boy, I sure miss the days of cerebral uh, Republicans like uh, President Ronald Reagan. Really? Did you like Ronald Reagan? Because, you know, I was around and heard how you talked about him as well. <laughs> folks, it's not about what we say. Those folks that said, oh, you know, I really don't like what President Trump says on Twitter. 
You know, I'm just a little bit more concerned about what's going on in the abortion clinic with these unborn babies than I am about what's going on with President Trump and his Twitter account. I'm a little more concerned about what's going on in our classrooms when you have these demons in there trying to teach our children about all this filthy homosexuality and transgenderism, trying to force it down their throats. I'm a little bit more concerned about them teaching them to hate America and hate policemen and hate law and order. What came out of Donald Trump's mouth was just a drop in the bucket compared to the trash that we see being forced on our children and on, this, this, on our society every day. How dare these folks on the left talk about President Trump has a foul mouth. Have you heard some of the music you have been producing lately? It's so filthy we can't even say the titles on television. And you have the nerve to tell me that my mouth is filthy and I sound angry. You know, the other day on Facebook, somebody told me, said, I, you know, I think you lack a little sensitivity. I said, you know what else lacks sensitivity? Pulling an unborn baby apart limb by limb in the womb lacks sensitivity as well. Forcing ideas on children in classrooms lacks sensitivity as well. Folks, it's time for us to stop being concerned about the names people call us. It's time for us to stop worrying about the virtual signaling uh, leftist weirdos on the other side and what they think, because I'm going to tell you something. They didn't build this country. They didn't build it. Guess who built this country? You built this country. Hard-working patriots built this country. Folks who got up off their butts after 9-11 and then sat around and cried about it went down to the induction center and signed up to go fight in our military. They're the ones that helped build this nation. Yeah. Folks who fought in Vietnam and Korea and World War II, those who marched in the Civil Rights Movement, those are the people that built this nation. People who love our flag and love our nation and respect our Constitution and the men and women who serve us. That's who built this nation. Those blue haired freaks that don't a bit more know anything about life than a man in the moon did not build this nation. Let me tell you something about the woke crowd. The woke crowd was asleep during Bible study, history, and economics. And it shows in everything that they push. And it's time for us to start pushing back against them, folks, because here it is. This is not a fight between Republicans and Democrats. It's not. This is a fight between people who love America and people who despise it. This is a fight between those who love capitalism and all the great things that it's bought and all those folks out there that think socialism is the greatest thing since sliced bread, even though, even though they have seen the evidence that it has killed millions in the 20th century and will continue to kill millions if we allow it. It has destroyed nations, destroyed cities, destroyed states, and the policies thereof have done the exact same thing. I'm standing here looking at two guys right here, two guys in the audience right here who came from a nation that used to be one of the greatest nations on earth until they embraced socialism. And then it caused good men like Omar Lugo, Lugo, Lugo to have to flee and come here to this place. Guys, we are the last domino standing. And you guys are standing on the parapet, ready to defend it. This is not a time for weak people, folks. People ask me all the time, why, why are you so angry? Why are you so demonstrative? Why do you talk so loud? I talk loud because I want people to hear this. I want you to hear this. And when I say this, I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to our enemies. When I sit... At night, sometimes. Sometimes I sit up in my loft. Some, and for those of y'all don't know, I got a model train set. And gosh, I love that model train set. <laughs> I was just talking to somebody else about that model train set. And I go up there and work on that thing sometime. And then I sit back. And sometimes in my thoughts, what I often find myself thinking about are things that actually bring tears to my eyes. You know? Not anybody in particular do I think about. I just think about myself. I think about how much I love my grandson. You know, I watch him run around. He's four years old now. And the funny things that he says and how he runs inside and hugs his grandma and how he hugs me and how he calls me Papa. Just, you know, I, I love that kid more than anything. I never thought I could love somebody that much. Never. It's indescribable how much I love him. It's indescribable how much I love my wife and my children. 
It's indescribable. It's not something you can even tell somebody. You, you can't define it with a word so small as love. But then I think about this. I think about that mother and father who had that flag hanging in the window with that blue star on it. And their son or their daughter is far across the ocean somewhere. Far across the ocean. And then they get that, they get that knock on the door and they go and there's an officer standing there and there's a chaplain standing beside them. And they have to tell that mother, that father, that family that that blue star is going to turn into a gold star and your loved one's not coming home. You're never going to see them again, never going to hug them again, not on this earth. Now I think about the reason they did it for. The reason they did it is so we could sit here tonight. Now that sounds cliche, but that is the truth. That is not a theory. That is not some wild-eyed idea. That's not something that just exists in a John Wayne movie. That is the truth. Young men and women have given their lives for this nation. All the way from the beginning to this moment right now, they did it so you could sit in those chairs and listen to me right now. They did it so I could stand here and speak without some jackbooted thugs coming in here throwing chains on me and dragging me away. They did it so this nation could re remain free and strong and proud and brave. And when I think about it, guys, every time it brings tears to my eyes. The way people have sacrificed for this nation. And then they hear people say that this nation is not good enough. That this nation is less than. That this nation is racist. My God, where do you, what part of this country do you have to live in? Where are you at in your mind to say that this is a racist nation? Where? Show it to me. Bring it to me. Lay it at my feet. Any person that thinks that this is a racist nation, look here. I got a personal story to tell you. A personal story to tell you. I'm standing right here and I'm looking at all these different faces in here and I see people that don't look anything like me. Some of whom have embraced me in tears and tell me that they love me. And they don't love me because I'm a black man or because I'm a white man. They love me because we share a heart. We share a heart for this nation. We support this nation where people don't care what you look like anymore. Just as long as you're standing up for what's right. And that's why we're here tonight, folks. We're here to stand up for what's right. Because we know what's right. And we have right on our side. And I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you, as you sit in those chairs, as you stand there, as you listen to me, if you don't think this is a fight, all you got to do is turn on CNN for five minutes. And your mind will be changed. And so... What I'm going to leave you with here tonight, guys, is this. It's time to stand up and be strong. You know, I said for many years, if we had a president that would just stand up and say what needs to be said, he'd get something done. And we had one in number 45. We sure did. And he got some stuff done. Folks complained about how he did it, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you like this. Now is not the time to be soft-spoken and timid and afraid. Now is not the time to sit back and say, well, maybe we can negotiate. Now is not the time to put a pipe in the corner of your mouth and say, well, let's see what the book says about it. This is not the time for that, folks. We are in a battle for the soul of this nation, the literal soul of this nation. This nation is actually standing at a crossroads in a giant semi-truck called socialism. It's coming down the pike. Now is not the time to look at that, look at our nation and say, uh, oh, you need to look out. There's a truck coming. <laughs> now is not the time for that. Now is the time for us to stand up and say, wake up, America! Wake up! You are about to give away one of the greatest gifts God has ever given to humanity. Humanity. You are about to give it away because you refuse to stand up like those who came before you. It is time for us to stand up, folks. It's time for us to be unafraid, unashamed, and unabashed with the truth that we have in us. And tell those socialist bastards who want to destroy this nation, you will not do it on my watch. You will not do it now. You will not do it ever. Because this is America. And I don't come from some weak jelly back people. I come from people who survived the Middle Passage and the Potato Famine. 
and who survived World War One and World War Two and Vietnam and Korea and survived uh, and survived the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, folks who survived 9/11 and thwarted the efforts of those that thought they were bullets. I don't come from a weak and ineffective people. And if you want this fight, you bring it. Because we are ready. Because we don't back down and we don't give up. We will fight for the life of this nation and we will fight for the future of our children. You don't believe it? You're going to get a lesson. The same way the British did, the same way the Germans did, the same way the Japanese did, the same way the communists did, the same way those terrorists over in the Middle East did. You're going to get a lesson in what free men will do to hold on to their freedom. So hold on to your hats, communists. Hold on to your hats, socialists. The patriots are coming, and you're not going to like it when they get there. God bless you all. God bless the great state of North Carolina, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.